With all Sony's dominant exclusive story games, did you notice that they have little to no exclusives in the FPS genre? Thinking back to a year ago when a whole Activision Blizzard acquisition went down and the media was literally crapping their pants over it, one of the biggest reasons Sony made it a goal to push for the stalling of this sale was that one of their most played FPS games in Call of Duty would now be owned by their competitor. Even though it has been clear as day that Call of Duty isn't going anywhere, Sony seems to have forgotten that they used to actually have exclusive FPS games and now seem dependent on Call of Duty, and that's a big problem. By the end of the video, not only will I give some solutions that could be taken by Sony executives to solve this clear issue, but also provide a fix to the overall state of FPS gaming. Are there any franchises that should return? Why does the current state of FPS genre suck ass? Let's cry over the use of live service games, make sure we buy a pro controller, and jump right into this. So when I look at the current state of PlayStation, they're doing pretty well. A slew of exclusive story games with Spider-Man, The Last of Us series, the God of War franchise, Horizon Forbidden West, all pretty good. I mean, no one in their right mind is saying that Sony is doing bad in that department. But if we look at the state of Sony's FPS games, that's a different conversation. One thing that bugs me about Sony's game plan with their games is that with all the great minds behind these excellent story titles, you're telling me there's not one person that can come up with a game or strategy when it comes to the FPS genre? I mean, let's sit back and think for a moment on the total shooter games that Sony has that can be played exclusively on the PlayStation consoles. That's about none. All right, well, let's also then include the fact that most games nowadays are going to branch not just from their console, but also to be included on PC. So if we include that metric, then all right, you have Helldivers 2, you have Concord, that are available on PlayStation and P. So that's that's close to exclusivity. Destiny is cross-platform and Marathon is reported to be going multi-plat. And the game that is the most played on Sony consoles is Call of Duty. So by looking at the current state of Sony's shooters, they have one FPS multi-plat game that is having their last expansion in Destiny. Conquered is an FPS game that is a hero shooter that is still up in the air whether it will actually even be decent. And two extraction shooters one being a very successful Helldivers 2, with the other being Marathon that is super early in its development. So in the FPS genre, Sony is lacking heavily in anything that has stopping power or that gives their fans much diversity or a choice of what they want to play. Now, I'm not here to do the whole console warring bullshit that always comes with these types of discussions. But when looking at Xbox, I'm not saying they're doing amazing. But one thing that is going well for them is that they do own exclusive FPS franchises like Halo, Doom, Wolfenstein, Stalker 2, and they are varying in style and gameplay that give an audience a choice of what they really want to play. I mean, that's always been Xbox's bread and butter. They were always the FPS games console. They just struggle to ever put out any major story game without hyping it up too much and then actually delivering on that hype or keeping studios open that actually succeed in delivering games. But I, I digress. My point to make in this opening section is that Sony has so much talent behind their studios. And for some reason, they seem to put their FPS games on the back burner like they don't really matter. But in reality, they should matter. I'm starting to think that maybe Sony executives are starting to get the picture because most fans will say, we don't need FPS games. We have Call of Duty. Well, here's the problem with that mindset. Firstly, what happens when the game you depend on sucks complete ass? That is one big pile of shit. And now you have to swallow a $70 price tag. I don't know about you, but when I bought Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, I felt like I just jumped headfirst into a wall with how bad the purchase was. Like I just got scammed out of my paycheck and I willingly gave my money away to a bunch of con artists. Yeah, I'm not really a fan of that. And secondly, we have to think that there is a possible fear of losing access to Call of Duty because it is now owned by your competitor. And by all means, when the Activision deal went through, I thought that Sony would have a meeting and come up with a plan to go full throttle in creating their own FPS games to use as an alternative just in case that ever happened, but they didn't. It's almost like they have a guarantee that Call of Duty isn't going anywhere and that they just don't really care about that genre. And the worst thing about it all is that Sony used to have FPS games. And they were good, but it seems like in the last two decades, they just sort of became complacent with the FPS genre and just decided that let's just have Call of Duty take the wheel. This is a problem because complacency leads to a lack of advancement. And when you look at the current state of the FPS genre as a whole, it's just crap. And that's why whenever you see an FPS game that actually lands on its feet, it becomes relatively successful. And sometimes it becomes a hit. 
Overwatch became a phenomenon when it was first released because of the massive decay of the FPS genre. And granted, Overwatch 1 was a very fun game to play. It became game of the year, it was different, and the style was just fun. But then Blizzard became complacent, and Overwatch 2 became a glorified up. The game just collapsed. So in order to fix the problem, I have some solutions that can be taken by Sony to avoid this complacency and not only dominate the story-based game market, but become more competitive in the multiplayer space. So when I think about the old days when the PS2 was the most dominant console out there, releasing back in October of 2000, it honestly had a leg up in graphics and exclusive games. The following year in November, the Xbox released with Halo CE, which did change the gaming landscape. But even with its release, PS2 was still at its peak. We really didn't get to see much of PlayStation's real online capabilities in the multiplayer space until 2006 when the PlayStation 3 was officially released. Because before the PlayStation Network was created, you had to use one of these to get access to online. And for a while, when Xbox Live was first released in November of 2002, Sony had created their own FPS games to compete with Xbox's plethora of FPS giants. One of my ideas that I think would help Sony the most in this modern era would be to look back at the past and think what multiplayer FPS games really gave Xbox a run for its money when they had first released. And the two most notable franchises that come to mind are Killzone and Resistance. Each received mounds of success in their genres when they first were released, and it's sort of confusing as to why they never were picked up, especially in this most recent generation. Killzone was always connected to being called Sony's Halo Killer throughout most of his lifespan. Not really chosen by the devs to be given this title, but the media sort of threw it their way because of the constant release windows always matching up with the legendary franchise. Literally Killzone released days before Halo 2 and in comparison was killed in sales and ratings. But for what it was as a first installment, it had a solid story and easy to play gameplay. But Guerrilla, the same studio behind Horizon Forbidden West, had learned from their mistakes and actually released sequels and got better with each installment. Culminating in great games like Killzone 2 and 3, which both were great titles. They never reached Halo numbers of that era, but the point is that they were games that were good in their own right and had millions of fans that enjoyed them. And as we headed into the PlayStation 4 era, Killzone had been now considered a staple franchise alongside Uncharted that would be plastered all over console boxes. But unfortunately, with the release of Killzone Mercenary on the PS Vita and Shadowfall on PlayStation 4, the game support from Sony sort of collapsed. I mean, how could you not do well with the massive sales of the PS Vita, am I right? They did not see the same success as previous games and Sony had pushed the main devs of Guerrilla Games to work on Horizon Zero Dawn rather than continue the franchise into the next generation. The game was not received well, but it actually was one of the best looking games on the market, and Guerrilla actually uses the same engine today for the Horizon games. In my opinion, Killzone fits all the needs or wants that I believe would solve a lot of Sony's problems in the FPS genre. Killzone has a premise of an interesting sci-fi story that is different enough where fans can distinguish between the other games in the same field. And if you were able to take the same formula that showed success in Killzone 2 and 3 and make an updated version of these games, then you literally would have a fun experience that millions of fans would be happy to play. Even when looking at Resistance, which was made by the Ultimate Iron Man dev team of Insomniac, it was really a fun experience to play. One of the darkest games that Insomniac had ever made that had an interesting story and considered the best co-op experience on the PS3. All three of the Resistance games had pretty high praise and the only reason why this series did not continue was mainly for Insomniac believing that it could stop at 3 for the time being and maybe be brought back again at a later date. I mean, it did have a pretty solid conclusion. I mean, they went off to make more Ratchet and Clank games, Sunset Overdrive, Spider-Man, and now they're working on Wolverine. So, I mean, they were a little busy, but even so, they are an extremely talented studio. Maybe we can try to get them looking at making a Resistance game to bolster FPS feel. Now, the caveat to bringing back old franchises is that they're old and sometimes really old. So if you were to release them nowadays, you will have an entire generation of gamers that will either be confused and have no idea what you're talking about or won't really care unless the game has a Nicki Minaj playable character. So how do you address these problems? You might have to go down the route of making some good old fashioned trend in the modern age remakes. As much as I have been extremely tired of seeing remakes become so damn normal nowadays, I honestly think it's the best route for bringing back games like Killzone or Resistance. That way you can create a new era of games and maybe update some of the issues that of the original titles that cause a lot of fans to be annoyed. And I think one of the best aspects of making these remakes 
is that you can use a new generation of consoles to push the barriers of what these games can do and actually make them bigger than what they originally were. There's nothing wrong with creating a remake of a classic title. And what's good about doing this from Sony's perspective is that you have a good idea in the pipeline and old fans of these titles will get hyped to be able to play them again. And you'll also get a whole new set of fans that never got to experience these games and will now get to enjoy them for the first time. So when thinking of my next solution, let's just say you hate the idea of bringing back Killzone Resistance and you don't want to touch them in remakes. You want them to stay the same with no changes. Okay, that's fine. But maybe the simplest and most direct action that should be taken is to make new story-based FPS titles. I mean, this might sound crazy, but maybe Sony is pretty damn good at making stories in their games. I mean, it's a kind of a wild concept. How many of the big exclusives that Sony owns are open world story-based games? You got Spider-Man, the God of War franchise, Horizon Forbidden West and Zero Dawn, Ghost of Tsushima, Final Fantasy VII Remake and Rebirth, Rise of Ronin, and I mean, there's more. So in the open world department, I think Sony's hit the quota. How many FPS titles does Sony own that have a story that you progress through that's either open world or linear? Maybe two? You got Destiny and Marathon. I mean, other than not having enough time in your schedule to progress through most of these games because they're just so damn long. I think the proportion between open world adventure games and FPS titles is a little off. And based on the data, the most popular genre in all of gaming are shooters. So then why does Sony give such low effort in making their own shooter games and prioritize making massive open world story games instead? Well, it's not easy and it saves money. What I think would be the best strategy for Sony going forward would be to take what they are best at which is crafting story games and incorporate these story elements into FPS titles. Basically do a fusion dance between the two genres. I know I mentioned them before, but when you look at the 360 PS3 era, where you had Call of Duty Modern Warfare, Halo 3, Resistance, Killzone 3, Battlefield 3, I mean, you had a plethora of amazing FPS games that not only had amazing online multiplayer, but also crafted stories that were unique and competing for game of the year. I know nowadays the FPS genre has basically fallen into a state of free to play trash, but there is so much room for growth and greatness if you can incorporate a good story into a fun FPS title. And what I think is best about shooter games is that you have a story and then you have a multiplayer that keeps the gamers around for more. So yes, if you don't want to fall back into nostalgia and remake old titles, then maybe call upon Gorilla or Insomniac to maybe invest in a new IP or get one of your newer dev teams in deviation to make their own new IP. And instead of trying to prioritize free to play model, which most times fails miserably and is just shit, maybe they can take their time and craft a story based FPS game that has a plethora of content available at launch. As much as I can crap on the modern day FPS genre, the fans of these titles are dying for something that not only can have fun gameplay, but also has content available just to keep them around. And I just think that Sony is selling themselves short by only prioritizing their story writers to only make open world massive titles instead of maybe dishing out some of their talent to go into the shooter genre. Now with Sony being the leader in the console market, it sort of has created a very interesting situation around the gaming space, even with their competition. This year, a lot of news has come out where Microsoft has loosened their exclusivity on certain titles that they are publishing to now be able to be on different platforms to try to maximize their profits. And with my final solution, I think from Sony's perspective, if you are unwilling to make your own exclusive FPS games, then you may want to have a call with Phil Spencer and possibly invest in bringing FPS titles from your competitor to your brand. And I know the console fanboys may shit their britches over this argument, but hear me out. In the last month, there have been quite a bit of talk in the gaming media over whether Microsoft was actually thinking of adding famous Microsoft exclusives like Halo to other brands. Whether that was going to be Halo MCC, Halo Infinite, or the new Halo CE remake. Now, this would be groundbreaking for several reasons. Firstly, it'd be very weird for Halo fans because they had always had a synonymous feeling of having Halo on Xbox consoles. And now if it's going to jump to its competitor, it would be like Mario being played on the Sega Genesis. It just doesn't seem right. Secondly, this would create a buzz of new gamers to play Halo for the first time on devices that never had access to this before. And this would actually cause a major shift in population to these games, which would be great for the franchise. I mean, look at Sony's top games played and purchased in the last few months. In the top 25 and even the top 12, four spots are taken by 
Microsoft owned games. So from Sony's perspective, if I'm unwilling to take one of my story based studios and make an FPS game, then maybe the best move would be to pay some cash to Microsoft and buy access to Halo to be put on their console. I mean, sure, you might feel a little weird paying your competitor for their games, but this does solve the ultimate problem in an instant. While we don't want to have to rely on Call of Duty or Bungie games to take care of business all the time, then maybe we just add a legendary franchise like Halo to our shelf, and now fans will be taken care of. I think this might be the hardest solution compared to the previous two that I mentioned, because you have to hope that Microsoft is willing to make a deal and you would also be at the whim of your competition. But in reality, this would be nearly the last case scenario in my opinion. You shouldn't have to rely on this option, but I think if Microsoft is willing to make these types of deals and you don't want to invest in devs making an FPS title and hope it doesn't flop, then take products that have proven to work and pay the money needed to get them on your brand. Money can do a lot. And if Microsoft is willing to add their games to your platform, I put the console war bullshit to the side in order to provide an FPS game that it's all the marks your fans want to see. What do you think Sony should do to increase their number of FPS games in their stockpile? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And drop a thumbs up and subscribe if you've liked the video so far. Sony, in my opinion, has proven to be the kings of story-based exclusives in the last two generations, nearly nailing every major story game that they produce with several accolades for what they accomplished. And what always made me surprised about them was that with all of this success, they still failed at one major aspect of gaming that they never could land, and that was the FPS genre. For the last decade, they seemed to put the FPS genre on the back burner, either because they felt like they never had money or time to invest in developing that aspect of their brand, or became complacent with having Call of Duty be their FPS dependent title. Unfortunately, complacency causes aspects of development and growth to a halt, which is clearly evident with the FPS genre of games. In the last decade, I've seen the overall outlook of the FPS titles decay from being filled with top tier titles to becoming a joke, even though to this day, it is the most played genre in all of gaming. And what I find the most crazy that even with the Activision Blizzard deal being officially done, Sony seems not willing to take action to expand their FPS games to give themselves insurance. I think in all honesty, Sony has the ability to make amazing games no matter what genre they're working on, but it takes some sort of investment to actually make it there. From my perspective, being a fan of gaming in general, when all the brands are at the top of their game, that's when we see the absolute best product being produced. We had games like Modern Warfare 3, Halo 3, Killzone 3, Resistance 3, Battlefield 3, all released during the 360 PS3 era, we had the best era of gaming. Each title pushed the other to become better, which always causes us consumers to eat good. So my hope is that with Sony seeing the growth of profits in the PC market, they may want to expand on their FPS collection. I believe if they follow one or more of my three solutions, they will not only prove that they can land on the story-based games, but expand into the FPS market in the future. But if you're interested in hearing about a possible Halo CE remake, coming to PlayStation, I break down the good and bad of this news in a previous video. Check out the video on the end screen and let me know what you think. Until next time, this is Marsman signing off. Peace out, guys.